Today we're back at Sheffield Memorial Park, just outside Sayre on the Somme front line. And today we're here to take a look at the story of the man who was in charge of the attack here that day, Brigadier General Hubert Conway Rees. Hubert Conway Rees was born in March 1882 in Conway, Wales. He was educated at Charterhouse School in Surrey before going on to join the East Surrey Regiment in December 1900. Rees served in the Second Boer War. He was a lieutenant in his battalion, but he transferred to the regular army in January 1903. By doing that, he took a lower ranking commission as a second lieutenant, but he was promoted uh, to a lieutenant in 1906 and then to a captain in 1912. Rees was sent to France shortly after the outbreak of war. He fought in the retreat at Mons and then in the first Battle of Ypres. By the time June 1916 rolled around, Rees had been promoted to the role of Brigadier General. He was temporarily in command of the 94th Infantry Brigade. That was a unit made up of the newly formed PALS battalions. Now, it was a temporary commander role because the usual commander of that brigade, Carter Campbell, had been taken ill. So on the 1st of July 1916, Brigadier General Rees found himself in charge of the attack at Serre here on the 1st of July, the first day of the Battle of the Somme. Now much has been made of the generals at the Battle of the Somme and whether or not they made the right decisions and whether or not they were ultimately responsible for the countless lives that were lost. Now that conversation is probably a topic for a different video, but what I thought would be useful today is take a look at one of those generals, the general who was in charge here at Serre, one of the areas of the Battle of the Somme that suffered the worst and most heavy casualties on the first day of the battle. And we have some fairly detailed memoirs written by Brigadier General Rees himself, where he recalls the events here on the first day of the Somme. And I thought it would be interesting to take a look at those today and tell some of his story. We're going to start by looking at a section of his memoirs where Rees talks about the concerns he had of the attack here and talks about some of the reservations he had and whether or not he thought the attack here could be a success. The short space of time allowed for the capture of each objective made it essential for the whole of my brigade to advance at zero hour. Otherwise they would not reach the positions assigned to the time laid down. In 20 minutes I had to capture the first four lines of trenches in front of Serre. After a check of 20 minutes, I was allowed 40 minutes to capture Serre, a village 800 yards deep, and 20 minutes later to capture an orchard on a knoll 300 yards beyond. So we've moved um, down the hill behind uh, Sheffield Memorial Park now um, to take a look at this ridge up here behind us. Now, I did look at getting up onto the ridge, but it seems that it is in the depths of private farmland and the farmer um, is actually working on his land just here. So I don't want to traipse across his, his land. Um, but up here on this ridge line behind me, somewhere in the region, probably where those trees are or across just in this section of ridge line here, that is where um, Brigadier General Reese would have been overseeing this attack. He probably would have had his binoculars and he would have been watching across to the German front line. And from there, he witnessed uh, the bombardment that was put down on that German front line just prior to the attack. It was magnificent. The trenches in front of Cher changed shape and dissolved minute by minute under the terrific hail of steel. Watching, I began to believe in the possibility of a great success, but I reckoned without the Hun artillery. This 10 minute intense bombardment combined with the explosion of 20 tons of dynamite under the Hawthorne Redoubt near Beaumont Hamel must have convinced our enemy observer that the attack was in progress. And as our in infantry advanced, down came a perfect wall of explosive along the front trenches of my brigades and the 93rd. It was the most frightful artillery display that I have seen up to that time and in some ways I think it was the heaviest barrage I've seen put down by the defence on any occasion. 
So I've just stepped back, I'm fairly well off the Sheffield Memorial Park, just to take a look. Along this ridge line here is roughly where General Reese would have been positioned, and you can see why. So here in front of us, the land dips into this kind of valley behind what is now Sheffield Memorial Park, and then this is what would have been no man's land looking across towards Sare. Over there is the village of Sare. So from this position over here, General Reese had a commanding view looking across this piece of land. Now you have to remember these trees weren't thick like they are today. Um, they would have been a lot less um, bushy and in fact they were kind of split into four individual um, cops as they were called of trees. But over on the ridge here is where General Reese would have been positioned to oversee the attack here. So General Reese stood up here on the ridge, has seen that bombardment come down on his front line, but it was time to give the order to advance, and he did just that. Uh, the front line, uh, the first wave, went over the top, attacking across towards Serre. Now, as we talked about in our previous video, that first wave was almost completely cut down. The machine gun fire, the artillery bombardment, the rifle fire from the German soldiers, so intense that that first wave was almost completely wiped out. Then the second wave went into action and we've got some more of General Reese's memoirs from what he saw at that moment when the second wave went into action here. At the time this barrage became really intense, the last waves of the attack were crossing the trench that I was in. I have never seen a finer display of individual and collective bravery than the advance of that brigade. I never saw a man waver from the exact line prescribed for him. Each line disappeared in the thick cloud of dust and smoke which rapidly blotted out the whole area. I saw a few groups of men through gaps in the smoke cloud, but I knew that no troops could hope to get through such a fire. So in our previous video where we were talking about General Rawlinson, we talked about how there were real challenges with the communication. And that was happening with General Reese as well. He started to receive messages uh, that weren't linking up with what he saw here in front of him. Messages now begun to pour in. An aeroplane reported that my men were in Serre. The Corps and the division urged me to support the attack with all the force at my disposal. I was quite sure that we had not got anyone into Serre, except a few prisoners, but the 93rd Brigade on my right reported that their left had got on, whilst the 4th Division beyond them claimed the first four lines of German trenches and was said to be bombing down our way. It was obviously necessary to attempt to get a footing in the German front lines to assist these two attacks. It was becoming clear to General Rees that the attack here was a complete failure. And it was at that moment that he had to make a decision. My two staff officers, Piggott and Sterling, were considerably surprised when I stopped the advance of the rest of the machine gun company and certain other small bodies now passing by my headquarters. It was their first experience of a great battle. And all that morning, they obviously found it difficult to believe that the whole brigade had been destroyed as a fighting unit. So as we already know from our previous video here at Sare, the attack here was a complete failure. Thousands of men lost their lives, killed, wounded or, or missing. And General Reese was the man overseeing the command that day. Now, since then, there have been times when um, he has been described as the example of lions led by donkeys. Um, there have been times where he was heavily criticised for his decision making. But maybe when you read his memoirs and when you hear the, the things that he thought here, perhaps it's not that simple. And that's not for me to judge and say he was right or wrong in the decisions that he made, but he was here. There was a war, there was a battle, and decisions had to be made. I certainly wouldn't have wanted to be the man making those decisions, and General Reese was. Now, the war didn't end here for General Rees. He would go on to be involved in the Battle of Arras in 1917, and then he was part of the defence against the German counter-offensive in 1918, and he was actually captured and taken prisoner in that battle. 
Incredibly, there are actually some photos of Brigadier General Rees being interviewed by Kaiser Wilhelm himself. I'm going to share a couple of those photos uh, into the video now, an incredible part of General Rees's story. Now, whether you believe in the narrative of lions led by donkeys or whether you believe the men who were killed here were a victim of circumstance, it, it doesn't really matter for this video. This is about telling the story uh, of one of the men who was in command that day. And I certainly found it really interesting uh, reading his memoirs and I thought you would find it interesting too, hence why I've shared them with you. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, do me a favor, hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Think about checking out my Patreon page if you would like to. We've got uh, lots of other videos to come and I wanna keep on making videos on this channel. Um, and that is a way that you can support me in doing that if you would like to. In the meantime, guys, thank you very much. I'll see you on the next one.